Again, we're on page 478 where it says, provide a thorough client consultation for hair removal service. So a successful hair removal service is achieved with a detailed consultation, a prepared room and following all protocols, you guys, for cleaningness, pre-care, um, the service and post-care. So complete the client consultation form. Again, we're on page 478. A client intake form should be completed by each new client and kept in a client's file folder. Ask the client to complete a questionnaire that discloses all products and medications used, both topical and oral, along with known skin disorders or any kind of allergies. Allergies or any type of sensitivities must be noted and documented. Changes in medication, facial treatments, and skin care can occur between clients' visits. Therefore, clients should, um, should read, update, and re-sign a release form at the start of each appointment. Clients should also be given a post-care instruction and precautions at this time and again after each waxing service. So the intake slash client assessment form. Intake or client assessment form can be long and in depth for certain procedures requiring it like medical history or for new clients who have become regular clients. A longer intake form is not required to be filled out for each and every wax appointment, but regular clients should be asked prior to each appointment if there are any changes to their health or skincare regimen. There should always be a place on the intake form or record card for consent to receive the service and an acknowledgement that it is the client's responsibility to inform the esthetician of any changes that could affect the outcome of the procedure. That's very important, you guys. The wax release form, and there's a sample of um, a consent form on page 479. So in place of the longer intake form or client record, a more simple wax release form should be signed prior to each wax appointment, particularly for any facial waxing service, as clients may have changes to their prescriptions or skin care. This can alert you, the esthetician and client, to anything that might contraindicate the service or negatively affect the outcome right, of the waxing service. The wax release form should list the contraindications and potential risk to the wax service and have a place for the client's signature. By signing the form, the client assumes the responsibility of informing the esthetician of any changes in health or skin care and awareness of the risk that can go that obviously goes into getting wax. For the client and also for the esthetician, the wax release form serves as a protection against a formal complaint. Again, we want to protect ourselves as much as possible. So making sure that the clients are reading thoroughly through their consent form and release forms is very important. On page 481 at the top, please highlight and put a star next to the following. Post wax instructions and precautions. So. Following waxing, clients should avoid sun exposure and tanning booths, exfoliation, creams with fragrances, or other ingredients that may be irritating and excessive heat, like hot tubs and saunas, for at least 24 to 48 hours, and if any redness or irritation is present. Your skin is very sensitive after waxing, you guys, and your pores are wide opened, okay? Especially if you have very sensitive skin, it could be that your skin may be inflamed and red, okay? Discuss the client's indications and contraindications. So, indications are outward signs that the desired service will be successful and beneficial. In relation to waxing, indications include hair to be waxed should be a mi at a minimum of one-fourth of an inch long if it is virgin hair, meaning previously untreated hair or fine regrowth. Hair should be half an inch long if it is shaven and coarse, 
which is approximately, you guys, 10 to 14 days of growth after you have shaved, okay? If possible, the client should lift ingrown hairs four days to a week prior to the service. Not all clients will do that. We know that. Leaving the hair in the follicle and allowing the follicle to heal and normalize. They will probably want you to do that for them, right? Working the area of the body with a loofah or um, like a body exfoliant scrub prior to waxing is obviously recommended, but not on the day of the service. You want them to exfoliate several days before the service. The client should avoid tanning, again, for 24 hours before and after the area is depilated. A contraindication is a symptom or condition that makes a service or procedure unadvisable or that it should proceed with utmost caution, all right? So consider the needs of the transgender client. Male to female gender uh, reassignment is of professional interest to estheticians as their professional services in the hair removal are often called for. The stages that a patient must go through to complete gender reassignment from male to female are as follow. Emotional and psychological counseling, patients may, may be advised to dress as women for increasing amount of times. As this early stage of transition, they may seek temporary services listed here so they feel more feminine in women's clothing. They may not elect um, to do to do much to the face at this time rather than be clean shaven as this may need to return to their male persona for work. Um, number two will be hormone replacement therapy. Once the decision is made to go ahead with a permanent form of gender reassignment, a careful program of HRT, again, hormonal replacement therapy, is given to counter the male hormones with female hormones at this stage of transition, the patient also is often undergoes laser treatment and or electrolysis to the face and other body areas, including the penile shaft. Uh, many patients also request a more dramatic and obvious uh, beauty services. Okay, on page 482, there's a chart. I know you guys can see it. Hopefully you have your book in front of you. Um, there's a chart that has a lot of contraindications for waxing procedures. Put a star at the very top where it says leg waxing. So leg waxing should not be performed on clients who have varicose veins, okay? Body waxing should not be performed on clients with uh, phlebitis, skin disorders, epilepsy, diabetes, hemophilia, or other contraindicated medical conditions. Recent treatment or product use, again, someone who recently had a chemical peel, the use of glycolic acids, salicylic acid, or any acid-based product, uh, they will be contraindicated for. Recent use of hydroquinone for skin lightening, um, medical conditions or medications, someone who is on acne medication, such as tetracycline and Accutane, um, recent use of blood thinning medication, you guys, uh, chemotherapy, or someone that's receiving, you know, radiation, um, epilepsy, anyone with autoimmune disorders, you guys, such as HIV, AIDS, or lupus should not. Your indications are really common for pretty much almost all the services we offer. So again, you want to remember is aware of any type of allergies or sensitivities that they can list on their wax release form and hopefully it doesn't contraindicate them from getting a waxing service done but you never know right on page 483 most common services so the most common services for a male to female transgender client will vary depending on what phase of the transition they are in. In the early stages, phase one of the preceding list may, excuse me, many will look book arm and leg waxing, simple manicures and pedicures, minimal eyebrow trimming, facial makeup application and lessons, and um, fittings for wigs. 
So during phase two of the preceding list, um, the list, patients often undergo, again, electrolysis, uh, laser hair removal, more dramatic facial peels, more dramatic shaping of the eyebrow with either tweezing or waxing or electrolysis and more feminine hair and nail services. In phase three of the preceding list, there is a, a continuation of services of phase two. Again, you wanna be able to service everyone for all their beauty needs, right? Okay, let's keep going. List items needed in a wax treatment room. So this could be something some of you guys are wondering if you do want to pursue waxing, all right? Um, so the waxing room and equipment should be immaculately clean all right here at the school as well you working guys working with wax it can be very messy honestly it can be very messy especially as you guys are practicing it is very easy to get wax on the floor um around the ring of your pod on the bed so you want to be very careful all right but you want to make sure that you keep your room nice and clean if you ever get inspected which you will, right? But when you get inspected by um, TDLR, then trust me, they will look to make sure that your wax pot is nice and clean. If it's nasty, dirty, there's a lot of residue around the pot, you may get a fine. They do sell products to keep the these wax pots clean. There's different brands out there. The one that we work with here at the school is called Sure Clean. S-U-R-E, like sure, and then clean, sure clean. Um, and it's a GG brand, but there's other brands out there. You know, you just want to work with something that's able to lift any, you know, grimy wax from the pot or obviously also from the floor, okay? All right. Um, the music can be livelier, so you can play music if you if you choose to. Um, obviously, livelier meaning you know when we're doing facial treatments, it's like no words, it's very relaxing. Um, but when you're doing waxing, you know you can definitely play um, a different different kind of music, right? All right, so waxing equipment, furniture should be ergonomically designed so that both the esthetician and the clients are comfortable. The waxing table, you guys, should be adjustable to different heights and able to adapt from flat to semi-reclining chair, position for face waxing as well. If this is not possible, it should be the best, uh, it should be at the best height for the esthetician to provide lengthy services without straining. If you were to have, a, of course, your own space, if you wanted to have uh, an actual bed where you would do your treatments, you can do waxing there. But if you wanted to have a separate chair for when you do facial waxing, that could also be an option for you. I do know that some SDs do prefer to wax uh, brows, for example, with the client sitting versus the client laying. So you would just have to find what works for you and then go from there. Um, a stool may be necessary, again, to help the client onto and off the table. Um, a rolling cart, um, you know, like the setup that is shown on page 483. Make sure that everything um, is covered, that everything that's holding your, your spatula, as I keep holding this spatula, a cover container stored with clean disinfected items like tweezers, scissors. If you're going to be using uh, a white pencil, okay, a white brow pencil or eyeliner to help you shape the eyebrow, okay, that is possible so that you're able to wax outside of the lines. That is something else that you want to add to your uh, waxing equipment and tools that will be needed, okay? On page 484, you want to have a covered waste container so your trash cans need to be covered, okay? Um, again, you want to have your towels and everything accessible for you to use, okay? Waxing treatment essentials. Your wax heater, you guys, one containing hard wax and the other one containing soft wax. We do have a double pot here at the school. Um, and then, of course, later on, if you decide, well, I'm only going to strictly use hard wax, then maybe you can just get yourself one of those five to 10 pound wax uh, warmers out there and, you know, no need to have soft wax, but that will be a choice you will make, okay? Uh, scissors, again, for trimming eyebrows. Um, 
you want to have your strips already cut so use items to be like bikini bottoms uh, for your clients if they're only getting a bikini done but i can show you uh, a method that you can use with a um paper towel that you will roll and then just use their underwear versus you having them change into like one of those uh plastic disposable bikinis but it's really up to you but you can also find those online okay gloves use non-latex gloves you guys any wax strips whether it's the pellen fiber or the muslin cotton which comes in a roll um some of them are about three inches wide and some of them you can cut them yourself like the roll that I have here, I can just cut to whatever um, length I want to, or you can get the pre-cut packets. Uh, all right, consumable, so pre-care. Hand soap, wax manufacturers recommended products. Again, cleaners, makeup removers, antiseptic lotions, such as witch hazel, tea tree oil, baby powder, numbing topical aesthetic product, and desensitizing sprays. Post care, put a star next to the following. Petroleum jelly for removing wax for eyelashes or other hair. Wax removing removing lotions, I can't speak today. Wax removing lotion for skin calming products such as aloe vera gel, salicylic lotion, uh, arnica and azulene. Baking soda for soothing compress solution. solution eyebrow pencils in assorted colors, sharpeners and eyebrow brushes. Now, a lot of you will choose to really go all out for your clients who are getting waxing, eyebrow waxing, and there's nothing wrong with that, you guys. The better you leave their eyebrows looking, they will keep coming back to you. So if you just do a simple wax and barely wipe them down, they're gonna be happy they're no longer hairy or their eyebrows look better. But what if you, take the time to actually fill them in shape them really nicely and hey it could be that that pencil that you're using to uh fill in your client's brow could be something that you retail and you sell to them um i know a lot of estes will retail kelly baker's brows products that's something that you can do there's a few others that i will have to um uh, write down the name for you guys they're a little on the pricier side um but again, you can always private label something. But again, it, it will be completely up to you. But it is something that is very popular nowadays. Now your ten to twelve dollar eyebrow waxing can now be twenty five dollars, okay, to thirty five. So it's up to you. You can also offer brow tinting, okay, um, along with your wax. So again, you can charge up to thirty five dollars for brow tint and wax. All right, on page 485, hygiene and infection control. Following protocols and maintaining high standards of hygiene, cleanliness, and infection control reduces the risk of cross-contamination from estheticians to clients and from the client to the esthetician. From client to client and from esthetician to esthetician. So, Keep applicators, strip, gauzes, and cotton supplies in a cover container when not in use. If you noticed, most of our things, especially in the wax room, are inside cover containers, okay? Clean tongs can be used to retrieve items after starting a service. Gloves must be worn, you guys, for all services, for cleaning and processing, um, again, sorry, must be worn for all services and for cleaning and processing equipment, all right? Tweezers and any other multi-use items should be thoroughly cleansed, dried, and placed into a wet, a wet disinfectant, all right? Following the manufacturer's instructions, which is our EPA, right? Our barbicide. After cleaning, place the used instruments into an EPA registered disinfectant solution, that is designed to kill all microbes, including staphylococcus, tuberculosis, and fungus, and of course, HIV virus. You guys, stainless steel instruments can also be uh, processed and sterilized in an autoclave. A metal spatula is exclusively used on a single client. Any remaining wax is discarded and the container is disinfected and refined or replaced. It, let me double dipping is never acceptable 
table and chair protection. So any part of the table that will come in contact with, um, with your client, skin or scalp must have protection. Either paper that is disposed of immediately after or linens, which is what we use here, and towels. And of course we have paper towels. Um, all of that has to be, um, you know, washed immediately after the client with, uh, of course, bleach, right? Place a clean sheet or sheets of paper on the entire waxing table for each new client for body waxing. If the client is receiving face waxing, place a protective paper sufficient for under the head, neck, and shoulders only. And you guys can see that they're using a disposable drapes are ideal for protecting linens from wax strips. Now, I will say that we have gotten, we have a lot of our sheets that look the way they look and that is from oils and from wax, okay? So that protective paper definitely does help. You guys, draping and disposable protection. So again, clients have different views and on modesty, you guys. So the standard should be to keep areas covered and uh, that are not being waxed. So uncovered it immediately prior to waxing, then covered after waxing. So um, you always wanna keep that in mind, especially like during a Brazilian, or you, you wanna make sure that your client is comfortable and that you provide them with a sheet or a towel to cover themselves um, when they need to. Disposable paper drapes serve this purpose as well. Until the esthetician can perform waxing services neatly and clean, towels and linens should be avoided in favor of disposable drapes. Wax is damaging to linens, I just mentioned that, and towels, as it does not easily wash away. Disposable bikini bottoms for bikini waxing not only provide modesty, but also protect sensitive areas. Disposable headbands protect unruly or flyaway hair from getting in the way of face wax. This is at the top of page 486. The last thing we want is to get wax on our client's hair. And I mean the hair on their scalp. That's not what we want to do. And if you're wondering if it's ever happened, yes, it has. It has happened several times. And thank God I've managed to get it off <laughs> each time, okay? The good thing the clients were very um, nice and understanding. And of course, they knew it was an accident each time. Um, but yeah, <laughs> off they went without any wax on their hair, thank God. All right, learned hand washing and infection control measures. Again, estheticians, hands must be thoroughly washed before and after coming in contact with the client. You guys know this already. Do not put contaminated hands or gloves into clean containers. Use clean gloves or disinfected tongs to open and reach into drawers if more supplies are needed. Hand washing in front of the client inspires confidence, right? We do not have a sink in the room, but obviously you wanna wash your hands before you start. Walk in there, sanitize your hands with hand sanitizer and obviously put your gloves on so they see you. Understanding glove use. Always wear gloves. Hair removal causes trauma to the follicle. Hair removal causes trauma to the follicle. When hair is forcefully removed from the follicle, blood spots may occur. Blood spots may occur. And blood and fluids may rise to the surface of the skin. This is normal. This is the blood that has been nourishing the hair papilla. Now, tiny, uh, what I call the pin bleeding is normal. Heavy bleeding, nonstop type of bleeding is not normal, okay? Put a star next to the following and highlight it. Use vinyl or nitrile gloves, not latex, okay? There's a lot of people that are allergic to latex. Latex breaks down easily via a process known as wicking, which occurs when the gloves come in contact with wax and certain products that act as surfactants, creating holes that allow pathogens to pass through. Change your gloves if they become excessively sticky during a waxing service. Now, remember what I said before lunch? that you are going to be applying a little bit of oil to your gloves. That is going to help prevent you sticking to the wax, your gloves sticking to the wax. Do not double dip. 
okay? Do not double dip the spatula or applicator unless you are disposing of the entire pot of wax after treating that individual client. Otherwise, use a new spatula each time to dip into the pot of wax. Disposal of contaminated waste. So, all blood stained body fluid contaminated cotton gauzes or other material you guys should be immediately discarded by double bagging it double bagging it or placed in a biohazard waste container and disposed of properly okay so if this was to happen please don't feel like we have to keep the towels or the linens or paper towels, everything must go into a bag and then a double bag and thrown away. Mastering cleanup. So clients should be booked so as to allow enough time to turn the room over, right? To clean up in between, making it clean, tidy, and presentable for the next client. Throw away disposable drapes and other disposable items. Clean and disinfect the treatment table and work area. Change the table linens. Uh, change wax heater collars if overly soiled with wax strips, for example. Place to, uh, your tools in a disinfecting holding tray. Use a wax removal solution, like the shirt clean I was talking about, to wipe away wax from all surfaces, including the floor, okay? Retrieve new uh, clean items and have them at the uh, and ready for the next service. Again, retrieve any paperwork, including the client's intake form and wax release forms. You want to have everything ready and available. All right, let's keep going. Page 487. Demonstrate waxing head to toe with soft and hard waxes. Okay, so while waxing with either soft or hard wax can be accomplished, on virtually any part of the face and body with the exception of a man's beards nostrils ears and eyelids their preferred wax choices for different areas and situations both will be addressed with the emphasis on the preferred method all right so general waxing do's and don'ts general waxing do's so what do we do we complete a client consultation card okay have the client read and sign the release form Wear single-use gloves to prevent contact with any, any blood-borne pathogens. That's for sure. Make sure that the hair is at least one-fourth of an inch to half an inch long for waxing. And we usually say you want it to be about the length of a grain of rice, okay, to get an idea. Trim the hair before waxing if it is necessary, okay? Um... Again, you want to perform temperature safety tests on the inside of your wrist before applying wax to the client. Avoid creating messy threads of wax by scraping uh, the underside of the spatula or applicator after dripping. Avoid wax threads to drop, again, falling on the client's lashes. Oh my goodness, yeah. I, that I can say I've never had anyone drop wax on anyone's lashes. That wouldn't be good at all or the client's eye, uh-uh. The client's eye should be closed for face waxing. Protect the clothes, okay? Protect your client's clothing to avoid wax drips near the area you are waxing. Again, when we're doing facial waxing, I do say that you want to uh, put a towel um, on their decollete to, again, uh, protect their clothing. Apply, always apply gentle pressure. Immediately after you uh, remove the wax, Redness and swelling sometimes happens. With sensitive skin, apply an aloe gel or a cortisone cream or a compress of a gauze soaked in uh, baking soda to calm and soothe the skin after waxing. Always provide post-treatment instructions to your clients. You wanna let them know what they need to do after their waxing service, okay? So general waxing don'ts on page 488 at the top. Do not apply wax without, again, checking the temperature. Do not double dip, okay? Put a star next to where it says, do not apply wax over warts, moles, abrasions, or irritated or inflamed skin. Again, that is a question on your chapter 11 test, okay? Never wax over curves, 
or two different uh, different planes in one application. I will show you what that means, okay? What it means by not waxing over curves, like the curvature on the knee, for instance. I will show you what you will do um, when you're waxing someone's leg, like someone's knee, you do wax their knee as well. So I will show you how you will do that, all right? Um, what else? All right, so face waxing on women and men. So the following section covers information on waxing the eyebrows, lips, chin, and the sides of the face, okay? Please put a star next to the following. Eyebrows, okay, waxing the eyebrows. Eyebrows enhance and provide and provide expressions to the face. They provide a natural frame for the eyes. Incorrectly shaped eyebrows can give the entire face an odd appearance. And correctly shaped eyebrows can enhance natural beauty and attractiveness. Correctly shaping eyebrows is an art combined with following a few simple rules. The start of the brow is the corner nearest to the nose with an accent to the point of the arch followed by the descent, descent to the end of the brow on the outer edge. There's a picture there on page 489 at the top. That's like a universal picture. I know you ladies have seen this before. The start, arch, and end point are all determined with the placement of the of an applicator using the guide illustrated, okay? Some clients have wider nostrils than others, which could affect the starting point, right? An alternative guideline is to, is to rest the applicator alongside of the nose, just above the nostril for a more accurate start point. So basically it's like this. Here's the tip of your nose that's where it should start okay your eye right there and then the center of your eye that's where your arch should be that's just an example again i'll show you guys in person an initial eyebrow shaping appointment will require more time than a follow-up maintenance visit Discuss in detail with the client what your professional and your professional knowledge and experience tells you should be achieved with the shape while listening and being sensitive to the client's opinion. Giving the client a hand mirror and using the handle of the uh, eyebrow brush, br uh, show the client where the arch is and if it is misplaced, where it should be. So again, you wanna really look at their natural brow first to see if, um, you know, what could possibly best suit their uh, their face, but obviously allowing the client to give you their input on what they want, right? Some eyebrows require minimal shaping, whereas others may need a complete reshaping that requires not only removal of, of unwanted eyebrow hair, but applying eyebrow pencil to fill in where hairs should be um, allowed to grow back. Clients can be instructed to apply the eyebrow pencil while waiting for incorrectly removed hairs to grow back. And that is what I mean. That is when you, if you have a product or an eyebrow pencil for retail, that is when you can let them know, hey, I'm gonna use this on you today. You can even show them how to properly fill in their brows. You'd be surprised how many, how many women do not know how to properly fill in their eyebrows. So they will purchase the pencil from you. Brush the eyebrow and determine exactly what you want to accomplish and convey to the client, making sure that they're in, uh, you know, they, that they're in complete agreeing with you, complete agreement with you before you proceed and apply any wax on them. And that is where that white pencil that uh, you could use something like that or something a little thinner to help you shape the brow. And that way it allows you to wax outside of the white lines. So waxing above the eyebrows, especially on the descent can uh, diminish the hair growth that may be wanted in years to come as eyebrows thin and the eyes obviously droop. After an eyebrow wax, hairs that were too short or not, or so not removed may be tweezed. This brings those hairs into the same force telogen cycle as the waxed hairs. After completing the eyebrow wax, apply 
aftercare with a soothing antiseptic lotion to the area and massage both brows stimulously, finishing with gentle pressure at the temple. Okay. Performing uh, a men's eyebrow wax with soft wax. So you guys, male clients, you know, a lot of men nowadays, they, they definitely groom their eyebrows. Uh, some get them waxed, some get them trimmed, some get them threaded. So they do it all as well. So male clients generally just want a, just want a unibrow and a heaviness under the brow removed. So without emphasizing an arch, the starting point should be slightly further and towards the center from the corner of the eye unlike the starting point for women so to avoid waxing a totally clean line that can look strange on a male client be conservative with the amount of hair to be removed allowing for intermediate tweezing along the brow line for a more natural look all right waxing the lip with any face waxing but especially lip waxing Ask a new client if it is for a special occasion and let them know that the that there could be redness and puffiness and sometimes even pimples following the waxing. Hard wax is a good choice for this area. Or a cream wax or a soft wax designed for sensitive skin, reducing the occurrence of the redness. The upper lip is divided, you guys, under the nose, and you guys can see a picture there, into two equal sections for the hair removal. The hair grows down and outward at a slight angle following the lip line. Under the nose, it grows straight down. Under the nose, it is impossible to pull the hair against its growth to remove those hairs. The hair, which is usually fine in texture, that is true, is easily removed when pulling across the lip uh, the lip line sideways to the growth with the rest of the hair on the half of the upper lip. So what does that mean? So you're not going to, let's say if the hair in the middle, that's what it's, that, that's what it's talking about. The hair in the middle of your lip, most likely is growing downward. So what it's saying is you don't necessarily have to apply wax down there and pull up. You can just remove that hair because it's very fine and it's very true. It's very fine in that area. So that hair can simply be removed as you are doing the two side strips, okay? If the hair is coarse, hard wax may be a better choice for lip waxing, okay? All right, uh, waxing the chin. I'm not gonna read, this is a lot of information again. Waxing the chin, a chin is often considered to include not only the chin, but also the area that's just under the jaw. So like this area here, okay? Waxing should not be considered the primary choice of hair removal for a chin if the client has never removed the hair with wax before. And if there are just a few sporadic hair, so it's best to probably just tweeze those. Multiple waxing with soft wax against the growth causes the regrowth on the chin to grow back in an irregular fashion, standing up and looking wispy. Waxing the sides of the face. So waxing the sides of the face, this is the top of page 491. Waxing the sides of the face can create problems for clients in the future. If they have not had the sides of their face wax before, then educate and inform them of the consequences down the road. Fine, non-pigmented vellus hair is normal and acceptable. However, bright lights and high magnification mirrors often make hair growth appear more super flaws than it really is. Have the client look into a regular handheld mirror and um, held that just short of arm, arm's length away in, in normal lighting. If the hair is not visible, it should not be considered a problem and it may not warrant the disturbance of removal and problems for the client in the future, causing them to regret choosing to wax. Mm -hmm. Waxing the underarm, okay, the axilla. Okay, so axilla is the correct professional and an anatomical term, although underarm is an appropriate term to use with clients. It's often a symmetry to the hair growth of the axilla. One side may have more direction of hair growth than the other. The different directions of the hair growth can 
converge in the center and for this reason hard wax is preferred method for hair removal the hair may be coarse especially if it's been shaved which also makes uh hard wax an optimal choice the sudoferous or sweat glands soft in the skin so if you do not choose to uh use hard wax then consider a cream or honey wax for sensitive skin for the underarms i 100 percent recommend hard wax um unless my only like thing if i have a client that has like very little hair very little hair and their hair in their underarm is very thin then soft wax will do the job just fine but definitely not for someone that has a lot of hair and especially if it's coarse and usually the hair in the underarm does grow a little thicker so but i have had clients that sometimes they have like three hairs in their underarm you guys and it's very thin so if that's the case i'll just do one very thin application of soft wax and it just comes right off again after completing the removal on um on one side, apply a soothing lotion to the area to prevent the skin from sticking while working uh, on sections if the underarm is particularly tender. A cool cotton compress of cold water and baking soda can be applied to the area while the other side is being waxed. All right, waxing the arm and hand. So soft wax is the fastest, most effective way to remove hair on the arms. However, removing hair against the growth will cause the hair to grow back in, again, an unruly fashion, sticking up. Hard wax or sugaring and removing with the growth will prevent this. Although both of those methods are much slower than using soft wax. Um, if the hair growth is strong or already unruly, then soft wax is a better choice. So it will be completely up to you. That's, um, I also do prefer soft wax for the arms as well. Waxing the upper arm. So most often the upper arm are just a few hairs right above the elbow. Uh, these can often be removed with blending using the wax that is already on the strip. If the hair of the upper arm is obvious, it will obviously require a complete removal. Waxing the upper body on women and men. While it is not common, chest or back waxing, there are some women who request these services. Usually it is in small patches, okay? such as a diamond shape of hair at the base of the spine or hair growing and converging into like the cleavage area between the breast. Um, so yeah, waxing body hairs may involve trimming the hair first. If using an electric trimmer, cover the wax pot or trimming the hair well away from the wax to prevent any flyaways of hair getting into the wax. Waxing the chest. Although the female areola should not be waxed the hair surrounding the areola can be waxed away they grow in a circular direction surrounding the areola from the outside towards the cleavage occasionally random hairs uh, deviate from the direction of the growth especially if they have been tweezed chest hair generally grows upward in the decollete and across the chest and over the breast from the outside towards the center then it gradually transition transitions to growing downward in the center before waxing a man's chest with shirt removed discuss what areas they would like to wax men sometimes book this service wanting abdominal hair or hair in front of the shoulders removed right up to but not including the actual chest area a clear understanding is very important before beginning you do not want to accidentally just wax their entire chest and then they're left wondering like oh well, i still wanted some hair in this area okay so you want to make sure you understand what is it exactly that they want waxed waxing someone's back um so when men book a back wax they generally want all the hair removed from just below the waistband upward so thought to the top okay if the client is wearing a business suit and will be returning to work suggest that he removes his pants along with the with the upper clothing provide a hanger to hang them up and a towel or drape to obviously to place around his waist leave the room leave the room ladies okay while he gets ready if the client does not need to remove his pants 
have him at least remove the belt from his pants for comfort and undo the top button to facilitate placing paper towels along the top edge of his pants. Kind of like how we do when we do base rolls, right? Unless you have a long reach, stand on the side, on the same side that the wax is going to be applied first, changing sides after that half is completed. The hair grows from the outside towards the center on the back. It's true. It, uh, if standing on one side for the entire service, complete the side furthest away first. Uh, this prevents back straining and from you having any kind of fatigue. Okay. Waxing the lower body on women and men. So bikini waxing. Bikini waxing can be categorized in three ways. American, standard, French, and Brazilian. The waxing method used depends on the client's preference and the extent of hair to be removed. While soft wax is appropriate for the outer regions, areas there where there are different hair growth direction, coarse hair and delicate skin hard wax is preferred okay blood spots are normal you guys when waxing the bikini area so inform the client that this is both normal and acceptable acceptable okay but again not heavy bleeding that's not allowed styles for bikini waxing as you guys can see what a american or standard bikini looks like on page 494 what a French bikini looks like. And then, of course, you have your Brazilian bikini. All right. So uh, the standard American bikini is the removal of all hair that protrudes from the standard bikini bottom. So the French bikini wax um, leaves hair on the front pubis area. Everything else is removed. The shape of the hair left and the amount of hair to be removed should clearly ascertained from the clients prior to starting the waxing procedures. With Brazilian waxing, all of the hair in the bikini area is removed, including, including on the pubis, genital area, and obviously the back. Importance of communication prior to bikini waxing service, all right? Good communication with the client is paramount to be, uh, to be sure that both parties understand what hair is to be removed and what should remain. A client may want hair removed from the labia and perineum and request a Brazilian wax, but in fact, she wants to keep some hair in the pubis area. To each his own, right? All right, so waxing the legs. Waxing leg, excuse me, waxing half a leg can be very considerably between an upper leg and the lower leg. So for example, me, I just need my lower legs waxed, okay? But a large surface area still has to be covered, taking more time and using more wax than the lower leg. And then of course it shows a little diagram on um, the direction of the hair growth and how you apply the wax. There's a little diagram, it's pretty cool. And then of course it starts on page 495, you guys, and it sh there's um, procedures showing, performing eyebrow tweezing eyebrow wax with hard wax okay on page 502 perform an eyebrow wax with soft wax performing a lip wax with hard wax on page 505 perform a lip wax with soft wax a chin wax with hard wax on page 509 so I'm not going to read all of this, but these are all examples and it walks you through the steps. But of course, I will also be doing that for you in person. So no worries there, but all of this is there for you to review and go over if needed, okay? How to do uh, an arm wax with soft wax. Um, how to perform a uh, men's chest waxing with hard wax on page 524. Um, this book, this chapter in this new book, you guys, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of very helpful diagrams and pictures, step-by-step -step procedures uh, for waxing. It's really, really good. All right. That's it. I mean, that was a lot on that. But anyways, that concludes chapter 11, hair removal. Again, please go back and reread and go through all the procedures. That way it gives you an idea of what to expect when you start performing these services.